The city of Nancy in the Lorraine region of eastern France is one of the most interesting of French cities for architecture. In medieval times, it was the capital of the Duchy of Lorraine, and buildings remain from this period. But its claim to architectural importance lies in two later periods. The mid-18th century saw the building of the magnificent Place Stanislaus, a World Heritage Site, while the early years of the 20th century saw a flowering of Art Nouveau design that put the city in the front rank of the movement, and it is these two periods that I will concentrate on. The complex politics of 18th century Europe meant that the exiled Polish King Stanislas, who was father-in-law of French King Louis XV, and who was in search of a title, was made Duke of Lorraine by Louis in 1736. Under his patronage, Nancy saw a flowering of Baroque culture and architecture. In particular, he oversaw the construction of what is now known as the Place Stanislas between 1752 and 1755. This connected the old medieval city with the new 17th century town and was originally built to honour King Louis. The Place is a large pedestrianised square, 125 metres long and 106 metres wide, paved with light ochre stones, with a diagonal cross motif picked out in darker stones. The square is surrounded by a series of imposing buildings, designed by the royal architect Emmanuel Herre de Corny to form a harmonious ensemble. To the south is the magnificent town hall. On each side are a pair of pavilions. These consist of, on the east side, the Opera House, formerly the Bishop's Palace, and the Grand Hotel. And on the west side, the Fine Arts Museum, formerly the College of Medicine, and the Pavilion Jacquet, now mostly offices. On the north side, the buildings were kept lower for defensive purposes to permit fire between the Vaudemont and Haussonville bastions. In the northwest and northeast corners of the square are magnificent gilded wrought iron gates with lanterns and fountains. Originally, a bronze statue of Louis XV was erected in the centre of the square. This was removed during the French Revolution and was replaced by a simple winged figure. A statue of Stanislas replaced this in 1831 and the square has been known as the Place Stanislas ever since. Leading north out of the square is the Rue Erre, where the Arc Erre, inspired by the Arch of Septimus Severus in Rome, stands. Beyond this is the Place de la Carriere. This is a long space with the vista accentuated by double lines of trees. The buildings on each side are identical and at the end is the Palais de Gouvernement, begun in 1715 but rebuilt as part of de Corny's scheme. The square has undergone several makeovers and actually became a car park between 1958 and 1983. It was in 1983 that the cars were banished and the whole assemblage became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. A massive restoration was undertaken in 2004-05 based on the 18th century plans, which is what we see today. The second artistic and architectural flowering began in 1901, but its seeds went further back. In 1871, the newly formed state of Germany seized Alsace and parts of Lorraine following the Franco-Prussian War. The French people living in these areas were expected to become Germans, and those who didn't want to could leave. The nearest city still in France was Nancy, and many intellectuals and artists fled there from the occupied territories. In 1901, a pool of talent came together 
under the umbrella of the École de Nancy at the instigation of designer Émile Gallet with a common purpose, to establish Nancy as a city of art. It is unusual to find a school of architects and designers working together rather than a single outstanding figure. Emile Gallet was a master of glass, ceramic and furniture design. Louis Majorel was a furniture designer. Auguste and Antoine Dôme designed glass and Jacques Grubert produced magnificent stained glass. Emile André, Georges Beat, Eugène Vallin and Lucien Weissenberger were architects. The style was florid, more concerned with picturesque effects and decorative surfaces than progressive functionalism. Buildings are very distinctive, bristling with turrets, chimney stacks and elaborate ironwork. The only architect of national stature to work in Nancy at this time was Henri Sauvage, who designed the Villa Majorelle. Let's begin at the Musée de l'École de Nancy, where we can see some of the ingredients that went into the design of the buildings. It is located in the house of Eugène Corbin, designed by Lucien Weissenberger. The Masson dining room was designed by Eugène Vallin, Victor Prové and the Dome brothers. Louis Majorel's bedroom from the Villa Majorel is recreated with the furniture he designed. The dawn and dusk bed is a masterpiece by Emile Gallet. Vivid stained glass appears everywhere, this example being by Jacques Gruber from 1904. Many of the collections come from the Villa Majorel, which is part of the museum. It is one of the finest Art Nouveau houses in Nancy, designed by Parisian Henri Sauvage in 1901-2. Sauvage was only 24 and this was his first project. When it was originally built, it was on the edge of open countryside. The building was intended as a showcase for Majorelle's work and was to be in the latest style. Outside, the fenestration forms fantastic patterns, but related to function, as seen on the large window to Majorelle's studio top right, and the staircase turret in the centre. The whole was embellished with decoration in ceramic, ironwork and woodwork. Inside, much has now gone, but the glass of Jacques Grubert is still an important element. The project was supervised by Lucien Weissenberger. One of Weissenberger's masterpieces is the house for the printer Albert Bergeret from 1903-4. Notable for its stained glass by Jacques Gruber and Joseph Janin and ironwork by Majorelle, it is conceived as a total work of art. The main gable sweeps up to the sky and the windows form fantastic patterns. There are some examples of whole areas being designed in Art Nouveau as the city grew in the early years of the 20th century. The Rue Félix Fauré is lined with individually designed houses, many notable for their painted floral motifs. This was mostly built between 1903 and 1913 by the architect developer César Pan and intended primarily for middle class families. Further out, a whole neighbourhood, the Parc Sarupt, was developed from 1901. This time, large villas were aimed at a wealthier class. The landowner Jules Villard commissioned Émile André and Henri Gouton to design what might be termed a garden suburb, consisting of 88 properties on 18 hectares. However, the take-up was not as rapid as had been hoped, and the designs had to be scaled down with the inclusion of terraced houses. Nonetheless, there are some wonderful examples of Art Nouveau to be seen there. Art Nouveau was not confined to residential buildings. 
Here we see the interior of the Brasserie Excelsior of 1910, designed by Weissenberger with Alexandre Mionville, and an interior by Majorelle and Gruber. The Chamber of Commerce was built in 1908, with ironwork by Majorelle and glass by Gruber. One of Gruber's most stunning achievements is the 250 square metre glass ceiling of the Crédit Lyonnais Bank, competed in 1901. There are many other Art Nouveau houses scattered around the centre of Nancy, reflecting a golden age for the city, and, with the Place Stanislas, confirming the city's important place in the history of architecture.